This video will serve for some as a refresher on adding and subtracting decimals. Be sure that the date and topic are at the top of the page. The topic is adding and subtracting decimals. The essential question for this video is what is the algorithm or process for adding and subtracting decimals? One thing that I always like to keep in mind while I'm working with decimals is estimation. Estimating my answer before I begin will help me make sure that I'm following the process correctly. If my answer is unreasonable or far off of my estimate, it's usually a sign that I set up my algorithm incorrectly. Adding and subtracting decimals is a lot like adding and subtracting whole numbers. Anytime we add or subtract, we're always careful to line up the place values. For example, if I want the answer to this problem, right, I would never line it up like this. You know by looking at this that this would be crazy, right, because you have a thousands and a tens place lined up against or on top of one another, right? That would never work. Instead, of course, right, you would have the ones values all lined up, the tens values, and so on, right? Standard process. The same is true with decimal addition. Let's say, for example, I want to add 3 and 42 hundredths to 5 and 8 tenths. Right? The first thing, of course, I want to do is just estimate, and I can just kind of think about this for a moment. 3 and 42 hundredths is approximately 3, and 5 and 8 tenths, I could round that to 6. So I know my answer should be in the ballpark of 9. If I do the work correctly, hopefully my answer will be around 9. I'm going to go ahead and set this up vertically. I have my decimals lined up, therefore my ones place, my tenths place, and my hundredths place are also all lined up. Whenever I notice that there's an empty value, um, I tend to put in a zero as a placeholder, right? Because having this zero here doesn't actually change the value at all, um, but it makes it a little bit easier for me to work with it. So then I just go ahead and add, right? Oops, I kept my pen there. I should carry that. And I just bring my decimal straight down from where it was right into my sum, into my answer. And my answer seems reasonable, right? It was supposed to be about nine, and I got nine and 22 hundredths. So that's pretty, I'm pretty confident that that's correct, and I've done it correctly. Let's go ahead and just do one more, just for another quick practice. Here I have four and four hundredths plus eight tenths. And again, I'm just going to do a quick estimating here. Four and four hundredths is close to four. Eight tenths, that would actually round up probably to one whole. And so that would be a sum of about five. So that's my estimate that I'm starting with. Once I have my estimate in my head, I can go ahead and line these up vertically making sure the decimals and therefore the place values are lined up. I'm going to go ahead and put in a placeholder again, and we'll just make sure we add these up as we normally would, just bringing our decimal straight down into our answer. So that looks like two decimals instead of one. There we go. And of course, I just want to double check my answer um, and see if it looks kind of right in the ballpark. So four and 84 hundredths would in fact round to five, so that means I probably had a pretty good estimate and my work seems valid. Just like adding decimals is a lot like adding whole numbers, subtracting decimals is also like subtracting whole numbers. And again, we just have to keep in mind that we keep our place values lined up and our decimals lined up. Let's say, for example, we want to subtract 6 and 31 hundredths minus 2 and 1 tenth. First of all, I would think of an estimate. 6 and 31 hundredths is close to 6 and 2 and 1 tenth is close to 2, so I'm assuming my answer should be in the ballpark of 4. Now that I have that kind of in my head, I'll just go ahead and set these up vertically, right? So where my decimal place is right here, I'm going to keep it so that the decimal is right below it with my 2 and my 1 tenth. That should be a 6, sorry about that. And again, since I have an empty value here, I'm actually going to fill it in with a 0, and then I'll just subtract as normal. 1 minus 0 is 1, 3 minus 1 is 2, keep my decimal in the same spot, and 6 minus 2 is 4. 2 and 21 hundredths, I feel pretty comfortable and confident because my estimate was 4, and 4 and 21 hundredths seems reasonable. Just like in subtracting whole numbers, however, there will be times when you'll have to do some borrowing. So let's just take a quick look at that. So we have 7 and 16 hundredths minus 3 and 43 hundredths. Let's try that. 
And of course, for my estimate, this is about 7 minus about 3. Oh man, my estimates are often in the 4s here. Um, so I'm thinking it's going to be around 4. And I'll go ahead and set this up vertically. 7 and 1, six, or sorry, 16 hundredths minus 3 and 43 hundredths. I can subtract 3 from 6, no problem. But I can't subtract 4 from 1. So as I'm sure we do with all of our subtraction. I'm going to borrow and carry a 10. Now it's 11 minus 4, which would be 7. Keep my decimal in the same place. 6 minus 3 is 3. Oh, I kept my pen blue for some reason. Um, and then I can double check, and that seems reasonable. 3, almost 4, when my estimate was 4. The most common mistakes I see with subtracting decimals are problems such as this, like 8 and 2 tenths minus 2 and 23 hundredths. And I'll show you where the error comes from here in just a moment. But first I'll do a quick um, estimate. So this is about 8 minus about 2. My answer should be somewhere in the ballpark of 6. And just like normal, we should be lining up these values with the decimals lined up in the place values. So this time it would look like 8 and 2 tenths minus 2 and 23 hundredths. And here's where my errors come from frequently. A lot of students want to just write down here and say this is a 3, right? But it's not, because really, let me go ahead and undo that, whoops, um, really this should be a place value, placeholder of 0, right? And you can't subtract 3 hundredths from no hundredths, right? That's impossible. So I would have to go through my process of borrowing. So instead, this would become a 1, and I would carry that to make that a 10 minus 3 is 7. And then, of course, in this case, I would have to borrow again because 2 tenths can't be subtracted from 1 tenth. So I would make this a 7, carry my 10. 11 minus 2, that I can do. I can now put my decimal in place. And 7 minus 2 is 5. With a quick double check, that seems totally reasonable. right? So the big error I see is when there is a need for a placeholder here. A lot of students skip that step and simply write down, for example, this 3 right below in their work. And that would not be the correct process. So just kind of keep that in mind. That's what we'll see a lot of in our practice in, in the classroom, just because I see so many errors with that. Um, so hopefully once we do enough of it, we won't make those mistakes anymore. So that was a brief refresher, or for maybe some of us, it was new information, depending on what we did last year. Um, but the essential question was, the, what was the process for adding and subtracting decimals? And hopefully that gave you a good overview of the information so that we can use those fluidly in class.